talk about one of the greatest truths that I believe uh, as believers that we need to grab a hold of. And this truth is found in Romans chapter 8 and verse 31. It's one of my favorite chapters in the Bible and it says this. It says, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? God is for you this week. God is not against you. God is for you so much so that he wants you to put your full trust in him to surrender every part of you, right? The good, the bad, and the ugly. He wants you to surrender your desires, your wants, your needs, your entire life, your hope, your dreams. He wants you to surrender it all over to him because he's for you, because he wants to paint this beautiful picture that is so much just grander than anything we could ever paint for ourselves. It's his vision that's greater. You see, often the devil will try to come in and lie to us and say, well, you know what, that's just too difficult. It's too hard to live for the Lord. It's too hard to walk in forgiveness. It's too hard to let go of sin, to let go of shame, of guilt, of regret. It's too hard to separate yourself from destructive habits or destructive relationships. But you know, the devil is the author of lies. There's no truth found in him. He can only lie. He can never tell the truth. And he's not out for your best. The devil is not for you. In John chapter 10, verse 10, it actually says that the thief cometh not except for to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come, Jesus says, that you might have life and life in abundance, or life to the fullest, an overflow of his life. We've got to recognize the attack of the enemy on our thought life. That when he tries to come in and say, well, you can't do that. It's going to be too hard. It's going to require too much of you. We've got to get in and recognize that for what it is and say, no, but God is for me. And what God is requiring of me, it's so that he can set me on high places. Because he wants to use my life for his glory. Because God has so many great plans that are just beautiful for the gifts and the talents that he's placed on the inside of us. My kids, whenever I correct them, when I discipline them, they often say, well, you just don't love me. You don't love me and that's why you're disciplining me. And I say, oh, no, no, no. I am disciplining you because I do love you. I'm correcting you because I love you, because I am for you and I'm not against you, because I want you to grow up and be you know, a godly young man or a godly young woman. I want you to see what it looks like to obey and to submit your life to the authority of, well, my authority, but of course the authority of Jesus Christ, so that you recognize that whenever you obey, you're gonna be blessed because God has great things for your life. But whenever you disobey, well, you know, disobedience leads to, to sin and leads to death. Disobedience is sin. And then I go on to tell him, and you know that God corrects me all of the time. Why? Because he loves me. And that I have a choice in that correction to say, okay, Lord, I receive this correction and I'm, I'm going to do what you're asking of me. Why? Because I know you're for me. And because what you're asking of me, well, it's going to help me to grow in you and it's going to better my life. In Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 12, it says, For whom the Lord loves, he corrects, just as a father, the son in whom he delights. Has God been asking you? to lay some things down? Has the Lord been asking and just requiring of you? I know for me, it's been some sacrificial time lately, spent in prayer and fasting because God's seeing the big picture out of it. God is requiring and he's asking us, of us to do these things because he's for us. Maybe it's, you've had some just nasty, evil thoughts, some lies of the enemy come into your thought life. And the Lord's saying, hey, I'm for you. Kick those thoughts out of your head. Tell them to go in Jesus' name. And then take the time to get into my word and build yourself up so that you can walk and operate in my truth for your life. If you continue reading in Romans chapter 8, verse 35, it says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? You know, because we all go through things in life. It says, As it is written, For your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. But yet in all these things, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you've been up against, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. 
Jesus Christ defeated death, hell, and the grave on the cross so that we could have life, life to the fullest, so that we could be washed white as snow, separated from sin, truly just walking in God's best. It goes on to say, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. God is for you this week. He loves you. Nothing can separate you from that love. Even whenever you were dead in sin, God still loved you there. He loved you so much that he didn't want to leave you there. Why? Because he has great plans for your life. God is for you. You know, you might just need to say that out loud. God, you are for me. And Lord, you're for me so much, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to obey your word. I'm, I'm going to just lay everything at your feet. God is for you and he loves you so much. All right, it's going to be a blessed week. Thank you all for joining me. And I love you guys. Uh, God is for you this week. And I hope to see you soon. Bye.